what I've seen happening worldwide in terms of hurricanes and so, I'm hoping and praying that we don't really get, because I think this place will be devastated. I don't think we can handle a hurricane of any magnitude. The Caribbean is a high risk area for natural disasters. One of our biggest risks is for hurricanes coming off the Atlantic. Hurricane warnings, hurricane watches occur every year during the hurricane season. We can expect to see changes in the intensity of these hurricanes. We are witnesses to that. You should be able to know what you're going to do with your animals if you have to evacuate or if they have to evacuate. How can you be ready for a natural disaster? We can only try to survive it and pick up the pieces, put them back together and go again. Soon as we have sorted one something out and we're on the road to recovery, something else happens. In April 2021, the La Soufrière volcano, which dominates the island of St. Vincent, erupts after 40 years of inactivity. 16,000 inhabitants are evacuated from their homes, and the northern region of the island is covered in ash. 60% of the agricultural sector is destroyed in just a few days. Sidney Tucker is among those breeders who chose to stay with their animals. The ash on the roofs was enough to sink not only mine but plenty houses tumbled in because of, um, of the amount of ash that was on them. No big loss in terms of pigs. I had some losses in, in the sheep, stray dogs, because dogs were let go. Dogs came and killed a lot of my sheep. The cost of the damage caused by the La Soufrière eruption amounted to nearly 300 million euros. The agricultural and fishing sectors that play a key role in the local economy were brought to a standstill. And during the evacuation of a large part of the island, pigs, cattle and other animals were mostly left behind. In total, 25,000 animals needed water, food and veterinary care. With the volcano, we had to think about providing food for the animals because it was nationwide. All the ash was everywhere, so there was no food for the animals. So we had, of course, our liaison with the different countries. And of course, the interaction was very fruitful with the countries because they said what was appropriate for the animals at the time. The La Soufrière ash column rose to an altitude of 20 kilometers and reached neighboring islands including Barbados, located 180 kilometers east of St. Vincent. This country is part of CaribVet, the Caribbean Animal Health Network, which connects veterinary services from 32 countries in the region and plays a key role in protecting health security. When they had the volcano in St. Vincent, the network was mobilized to, to send resources to St. Vincent. Animal feed, animal fodder, medications, skills. So this is an, a, a strength that we have in this region amongst the veterinary network where we can mobilize resources from several countries to go to an affected country to help mitigate against further damage, the loss of, of the animal life or repopulation if we have a, a complete destruction of population. That was the first time we were actually able to respond and send necessary items to the volcanic eruption in St. Vincent. So we're going through that now and getting recommendations and lessons learned. And from there we're trying to develop a regional disaster plan. Volcanic eruptions aren't the only threat facing the Caribbean islands. Every year, the period from June through November marks the hurricane season. The islands face torrential rains, violent winds, devastating waves. When you have a hurricane, there's a threat of wind damage. There's also the threat of rainfall. 
this can lead to the exposure to a lot of different pathogens. Leptospirosis is a disease that is actually endemic within the Caribbean and within Barbados. So that is a major, major threat. When you do have a flood, you can have standing water. Then you can have, for instance, vector-borne diseases, dengue, West Nile, Zika, all of these other vector-borne diseases then will increase. Hurricane Tomas caused 44 deaths in the Caribbean and hit Barbados in October 2010. 1,200 homes were damaged on the island and gusts of wind tore off the roofs of the sheds that housed David Waldron's breeding chickens. The hurricane, it was a night, so no one was actually here. You hear the wind, but you're not going to come out. So when you come on the farm in the morning, then you see the chickens, they were two days old and there's nothing that we could have done because most of them died. We recovered for the chickens, but not from the actual structure and stuff. We had to do all of that. No insurance was covered that. To prepare livestock owners for these devastating extreme weather events, veterinarians are on the front line. In addition to ensuring livestock health monitoring, Terence Mayer participates in the creation of a national emergency plan in Barbados. Adapting infrastructures, storing food and water is essential to limit the impact of future hurricanes on the livestock sector. With regard to natural disasters like a hurricane, I do not think many persons are prepared. They have no other structures in place. They will have maybe the shed or the field, but there's no temporary like electric fencing, solar fencing. Persons do not have enough water, um, usually uh, stored on the farm. And I don't think there are enough meetings to discuss the worst case scenario. You know, we've been fortunate for many years and we seem to go on that. The disaster scenario that Barbados fears has already occurred several times in the Caribbean. It takes the form of Category 4 or 5 hurricanes, which strike for several days on islands where the population is mainly coastal. Some very flat islands have been devastated. In 2019, Hurricane Dorian, classified as Category 5, swept across the islands of Grand Bahamas and Abaco with wind gusts reaching 200 miles per hour, causing unprecedented material damage and devastating livestock within 48 hours. The progression of this hurricane, one of the most powerful ever observed in the Atlantic, was monitored minute by minute within the National Emergency Management Agency in Nassau, the capital and largest city of the Bahamas. Here is what we call our National Emergency Operations Center. Once any system is impacting the, any sector of Bahamas, I call a full committee of members here to track and monitor the system as it approach. We are now using Hurricane Dorian as our baseline storm to see how we responded to that particular event. And all of our planning will be based on the lessons learned from that exercise. How to better care for the animals when a pending storm is approaching. And the simple thing is just to um, tag your animals, mark them, and let them go and they can find, naturally find higher grounds to survive. Because of climate change, the intensity and frequency of hurricanes are expected to increase. These, however, are just some of the threats faced by animal health services where multiple sectors are required to work together to respond. To cope with this uncertain future, stronger and better preparedness against emergencies is urgently needed. It is important that we are well prepared for a range of hazards, which include extreme weather events, disaster outbreaks, and agro-terrorism. National emergency management platforms that bring together animal and public health, security, environment, civil society, and legislative sectors are essential. We have seen changes in hurricanes in the region. Never have we seen a Category 5 
in the area of the Leeward Islands. In 2017, we saw two of them within a week. So we've seen a lot of changes in the patterns when it comes to the hurricanes. We need to give people warning about these events so that they can prepare themselves and their properties for them. The hurricanes, we can give at least a five to seven day forecast if we're going to be impacted. With models being introduced over the past few decades, we have actually seen um, our forecasting techniques improved a lot. With each event, the model can now predict better the next time around. These models and meteorological data are accessible to all states and contribute to the pooling of resources to fight climate disasters. Representatives of the Caribbean islands meet regularly to strengthen their cooperation, notably through the One Health approach. This approach considers that health and security of humans, animals, and the environment is interconnected and calls for broad multi-sectoral and interdisciplinary preparedness and response at local, national, and global levels. Having a multi-risk approach is going to be essential for the future. Countries that adopt the One Health approach and the All Hazards approach are going to be much more successful in combating diseases and also further problems that we haven't even thought of yet uh, as we come into this new age of agriculture and trade and globalization. We need to stop working in silos because we all want the same objective. We all want to have healthy animals. We all want to have good food to eat. All of us need to work together so that we could obtain that goal.